Good morning. It's Hurley here at Utopia Farms, and today is the day we're on our way, assuming everything's okay in the barn this morning. Well, we're quickly doing chores and loading everybody up. We'll see how the lambs did last night. I know we just had another lamb now, and so as long as no one else is lambing, we're going to be going, but if there's someone else lambing, we're going to be out. Hi boys, it's a little early for this, isn't it? Yeah, a little early. Well, we had a few problems in the barn this morning. Um, calamity, the mother still likes her, but uh, her bag was swollen up this morning. It looks like mastitis again, I don't know why, uh, but it was really getting hard, so both her lambs needed a bottle, but uh, at least even if she loses her milk um, and we get another bottle baby, at least uh, Calamity has a friend now and a mother it can follow around, so that part's good. And right now we just arrived at the fair. We're trying to figure out how we're supposed to park our, our truck because it uh, looks like they've changed things a little bit. This is a bigger fair than the last one. And it's not raining yet. Good morning, welcome to Kirk Hello. Hello. So we're at the fair. Um, they got really low gates and the rams are next to the ewes. So the rams at first were extremely interested that there were ewes there. So we're hoping that there's no uh, little episodes in the barn. There's a lot of people here because all the 4-H kids are here competing, but they're not going to be competing with the non-4-H people, so I think it's going to be a small show again. But these are our boys, and these are the girls, ready to go. And then you have the sheep over here with the jackets on. That keeps them clean. And then uh, these guys. So I'm lucky. I got some professionals to take my spot. So. This guy's gonna take my sheep, and Lee Bryan's gonna take one of the sheep, and Arnie's gonna take one of the sheep. And that way I can just video too. Now Arnie's talking to one of our old shearers that used to come in and do sheep when we only had a few. He does only smaller flocks, but he also does shearing demonstrations at these fairs. So we're getting ready to do this group. The Suffolk ewe lambs are going first. Okay, now our sheep are lining up to go into the ring. We got Lee that's uh, showing karma. We got Quinn that's showing Cleopatra. And we got Arnie showing Katrina. Okay, we're starting now. raised primarily for their meat. It is the only red meat with an increasing consumption trend in Canada. Ontario is Canada's largest producer of lamb and accounts for 54% of the process. 
farmers develop specific breeds for superior quality of meat and wool. An interesting history fact about animals and fairs. All breeds of animals were primarily developed through shows or fairs much like the one that you're attending today. Breeders would bring their animals to the fair to show them off in an effort to breed theirs with another, hoping to develop an animal that was better suited to the needs and the desires of that time. A sheep is really a resource factory. It runs on grass and water and sunlight, and it can produce enough wool to make three suits or a dozen sweaters each year. Sheep are ruminants, which means that they have four stomachs and they chew the cud, the same as cows. They tend to curl and spiral. Horns can be made into springs, hair horns, powder horns, and they're very useful to, um, to wild sheep, but they don't serve much purpose in a commercial herd. Sheep are very useful lawnmowers. During World War I, the American President Wilson grazed his sheep on the lawn of the White House and raised money from the wool of these sheep and it went to the Red Cross to assist in war efforts. Sheep are also being used today as lawnmowers with reforestation programs because the sheep eat the weeds and the grasses and allowing the new saplings to grow. Um, there's a few of the soda farms that actually have sheep as their lawnmowers and they seem to work quite well with that as well. Proper grazing can benefit the amount in the environment, the wildlife, and the public. As well, sheep grazing has helped to regenerate forests and wildlife habitats. Sheep eat the wo woody and broadleaf plants as well as the tall um, grasses and weeds. So the sheep are controlling the undergrowth and the animal's pointed hooves puncture the soil allowing more water and air to ski slopes. And the slopes are too sheep for lawnmowers, but the sheep scramble up the hills and graze on the weeds and the bushes, which, which also means that there's no chemicals being used. to get them as docile as they appear today. Now think of something made of wool, perhaps your favorite woolen sweater or your nice coziest blanket. Modern technology provides for a variety of colors and textures, and one hundred percent wool lambs. is only one example of a wool baseball. It's almost 150 meters of wool in each baseball, and it's because of the material that's natural or man-made materials with the elasticity and the ability to reshape itself and can withstand the force of being hit by a bot while traveling at speeds in excess of 90 kilometers an hour. So the next time you enjoy a game of baseball, wash your hands or slip your favorite woolen apparel on, trot or buy your favorite kettle of lamb, remember that Mary's little lamb was more than just a nursery rhyme. Sheep are a very valuable and versatile Ontario grown commodity. Totally opposite of the last show. Big ones won. Smallest one was last.
So as I said, this is the Dorset breed, uh, which originates from Dorset and Somerset, England, uh, counties in England in the mid 1800s. Our girls are waiting over there and the boys are against each other again. In this show, they placed our Dorset's exact opposite of how they placed them in the last show. Well, I guess the middle one was always the middle one, but they reversed the top and bottom, which I agree with more. Quinn's just holding candy there. Candy's a sweetheart. And the Dorset Rams had to be ridiculous again and swipe their head along the trailer. So they looked like they got spots. Gotcha. Okay, they're gonna put the heavy one first. Never the same. Total opposite again of last time. There's the get us higher. I'm sorry, the placings for that last class was again easy for me. First place, second and third all to the um, exhibitor of Utopia Farms, Lynn and Arnie Drew from Joyceville. Well, the rams are all tuckered out. One more ram has to go in the commercial class. And apparently Corey had some surprises when uh, he did the sheep today. Here's the girls. <laughs> so we're just going to the last class, commercial ram class. Uh, he's a purebred, but he's actually going up against a purebred. They're just not registered yet. This guy's a purebred too, and he's going to be in there with them. So when you don't register them, they just go in the commercial class. Just arrived home. We're gonna offload the ewes first and then see what happened in the barn here. Apparently we had some lambs. So it was a disappointing showing. No competition again. Just not enough people showing there. It's not fun to show against yourself and it's not fun to show against <coughs> sheep that aren't the same style as yours either. But very, ha still very happy with these boys. Like, look at them. You guys are champions, and you're not going in with them this time, buddy. Your guy perked up when he saw these guys again. And these are our ribbons from the fa fair. Didn't mean very much because, it, yeah, the the show is a farce. So, um, yeah, you can't compete against e yourself. It's just a waste of time and money like we were up at 5 30 trying to get out of here and all the training and washing and 
two hour drive there, two hour drive back and sitting there all day hiring Corey. It's just not worth it. Um, you, it's kind of sad because we like to show off our sheep because we're very proud of the sheep we raise, but um, you can't compete um, meat sheep with the show sheep. So I think we're gonna call it a day on the showing thing unfortunately and unless that they somebody establishes like a pound maker sale like they have out in Alberta which is great it's all the purebred meat sheep um, it's it's suffix and purebreds but it's um, it's working sheep and that that's the class we need to be in because um, that's what we produce so anyway this is what we got for what it's worth <laughs> People may think it's sour grapes uh, that we're not going to do it anymore, but it, it really isn't. It's, it is about how much time and effort we put into it. And if we thought we stood a chance that we could beat the big guys, we would definitely continue. Like, absolutely. And if, yeah, it would be nice if you're up against, you know, at least 10 other breeders. But, I mean, when there's only zero other competitors or... Two, it just really is not worth it so it's not sour grapes we actually uh, love it it's a fun thing to do but um, to be honest we were exhausted I think we're just getting a little too old for all this uh, running around and we're gonna try to keep it a little more simple so to end the night I guess you can say we're literally hanging up the towel on the show world and we're gonna stick with what we do best and that's uh breeding um high capacity sheep at home and uh hopefully helping a lot of commercial breeders improve their flocks with some really good genetics anyway we got a lot to tell you in tomorrow's video about what's been going on here with the lambs um quite a lot of information. So thanks for watching today and I hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.